The objective of this video is that you will know the high-level steps involved in SOC design verification flow by taking an example of mobile development. This slide shows the simplified flow of SOC design and verification in the SOC product lifecycle. We stick to only design and verification aspects although there are many more steps like board design, software development etc. Subsequent slides explain the mobile example aligned with these steps. This slide explains the starting three steps. The first step for any SOC product cycle is requirement gathering. Here, the requirement is gathered from customers at a very high level. For example, it can be as simple as creating a mobile device. The next step is specification finalization. Here, the product specs are finalized based on multiple interactions with customers and many iterations. For a mobile example, specs with several requirements are mentioned here, which should be supported by mobile device. First one is to support GSM connection. Second one is to capture images and video. Third one is to capture and play sound. The fourth one is to show images and videos on display. Fifth one is to provide a USB connectively. The third step is system design, where we need to select hardware devices or blocks that are required to meet the specifications finalized in the second step. This selection is based on the experience and device specs and can be refined during design or testing. For the mobile example, we need a CPU with four cores to meet the processing needs of the finalized specification. Since a CPU is required, an associated memory block is also required. At least 4 GB is required for smooth operation. A modem is required to support GSM connectivity, and a camera is required to capture images and video. Similarly, audio is required for capturing and playing sound. GPX or graphic processor and display is required to decode, format conversion and display of image and video. USB is required for USB connectivity. The DMA is also required for data transfer across SOC. The rest of the steps are explained in subsequent slides. This slide shows the system block diagram based on the items required in the third step. Here, all the required items are shown along with their logical connections. The various blocks connected through the interconnection bus are CPU, SRAM, DDR controller, DMA, modem, USB controller, GPX, audio, and camera controller. The display controller block, which is connected to GPX or graphic processor, is also shown. The verification blocks used to test the design blocks are also shown inside TB or test bench. The test bench contains a USB verification IP, speaker, and microphone. USB VIP is connected for USB controller testing. The speaker and microphone are connected for audio block testing. The next steps focus on designing and verifying these blocks at various abstraction layers. This slide explains the steps 5, 6, and 7. The fifth step is block level design and verification, where each required block is designed, and the respective verification environment is created for testing. The RTL coding is done here, along with functional behavior testing. The next step is to connect some blocks to make a subsystem. Subsystem testing is done in a separate verification environment. We can also reuse a block level verification environment to create this subsystem verification. Step 7 is to create a system level verification environment that includes all verification blocks shown in the system block diagram. These are the USB VIP, speaker and microphone, and display models. The integrated SOC is connected to a verification environment for functional testing in simulation. The test suite is created at a system level to create various scenarios to verify the functionality at the top level. The pending steps are explained in next slide. This slide explains the last two steps. The eighth step is to test the SOC design in an emulation environment. We can use an emulator or prototyping system for this. This step is mainly required if the design size is a bit, which is the case for our mobile example. To test with the emulator, we need an emulation machine and an SOC image compiled for a selected emulator. We also need a speaker and microphone model for the emulator. The connectivity between the host machine and emulator is also required for testing the SOC in this environment. The last step is testing the SOC in the target chip. 
The chip is fabricated and is part of the complete board. There is a detailed flow for board design and chip fabrication, but that is not the scope of this video. For board testing, we would need a board with an SOC chip and external peripherals like a USB device, speaker, microphone, and display device. There should also be connectivity between the host machine and board for control and testing. Generally, the test suite is created in the host machine to verify the functionality. Steps 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 are independent and can be executed in parallel by separate teams.